So this length here, what is that going to be? Well, that's simply going to be A minus B. Hey, welcome back to Baird Squared. In this video, I'm going to be telling you everything that you need to know about the difference of two squares. Now, I'm going to start off by doing a visual representation using some Play-Doh that I managed to take off my kids while they were busy doing the science projects. Now, I also managed to take a rolling pin and some cutters. So make sure you stick around to see the visual proof. And then I'm going to go on to uh, expanding the difference of two squares using that proof and then factorizing. So make sure you stick around because I'm going to show you everything that you need to know with the difference of two squares coming up. Okay, so with the green Play-Doh, I'm going to make a square. So let's flatten this out and make a square out of this. What I've got is I've got a 10 by 10 square. So now what I want to do is I want to make a little square out of uh, this Play-Doh here. So to represent the difference of two squares geometrically, we can visualize that this length is A by A which is the green square A by A, and the small square, we can just label it B by B. So we have two lengths, we have A by A, and we have B by B, uh, the two different squares. And what we can do with this is we can try to establish a rule for factorizing and expanding the difference of two squares. So let's look at this. We know this is A, and we know that this part here is also A, and this is B, and this part is B. So this length here, what is that gonna be? Well, that's simply going to be A minus B. And this part here is also going to be A minus the B. So the difference of any two squares is going to be actually four parts. Now I can show you those four parts. If I cut this out and I cut this part here out. Now, let's get rid of this square then. So when I subtract the red square, what I can do is I can take this length and I can add it to the bottom. Why is that the case? Because I know that this is A minus B and that's also A minus B. So in actual fact, if I cut this part out, I know that this part should in fact fit over here. So finally then, this length here would be A plus B and the bottom length would be A minus B. So this geometric proof then shows that A plus B times A minus B is the difference of two squares. So from the geometric proof, we saw that the shaded area, which is this area here, just the screen part, was actually equal to the area of the larger square minus the area of the small square. So in other words, what we can say is we have a squared, which is this large square here, a times a, minus the small square, which is b squared, which is b times b. So the difference of two squares is this part here, which is shaded off. Therefore, we can say a plus b, which is a plus b, multiplied by a minus b is equal to the difference of two squares. Now let's just quickly do some examples. Here's an expression. We have x plus 5, x minus 5. Now we know that this follows the same format as a plus b, a minus b. So therefore, the difference of the two squares should be x squared minus 5 squared. And we can simplify this further by saying x squared minus 25 because 5 squared is 25, x squared is just x squared. Let's do another one, see if you get the hang of it. We've got the expression um, 3 minus y and then 3 plus y. Now you notice that the original rule here has a plus b and then a minus b, and this one is um, 3 minus y and then 3 plus y. It really doesn't matter whether these brackets are switched around, whether the plus or minus is switched around, it's still the difference of two squares. So essentially what we have here is we have a squared, which will be 3 squared, minus b squared, which in this case is y squared. Now we can clean this up by saying 3 squared is equal to 9, so 9 minus y squared is the difference of two squares. Okay, so let's do a few more examples of expanding using the difference of two squares. So expand and simplify using the following rule, a plus b bracket a minus b equals a squared minus b squared, i.e. the difference of two squares. So here's the expression. If you think you've got this, then pause the video and try it for yourself. I have 2x plus 3 and then 2x minus 3. Okay, so 
we have 2x and 2x that represents my a and then the 3 the plus 3 and the minus 3 represents the b here so plus b minus b what we can do is we can write these as the, the difference of two squares so my a is going to be 2x squared and my b is going to be minus 3 squared one last step would be to rewrite the 3 squared as minus 9 so we have 2x all squared minus 9. This would be the expanded form of 2x plus 3 bracket 2x minus 3, the difference of two squares. Right, here's another one, and pause the video, try it for yourself, and once you're ready, press play, and I'll show you the answer. So I have 5 in each bracket, which represents the A in both brackets. And then I have my minus 3y and positive 3y, which represents my plus b and my minus b. So you would have 5 squared for a and then minus 3y squared for b. Now we can simplify the 5 squared by writing it as 25. So 25 minus 3y all squared is the expanded form of 5 minus 3y and then bracket 5 plus 3y. So finally, all we need to do is factorize using the rule the following expressions. So we have 9 minus x squared, and this is already in the format of a squared minus b squared in expanded form. What we need to do is we need to factorize it in the same format as a plus b and a minus b. So first thing first, the 9 represents my a squared, and my x squared represents my b squared. So what I notice is that 9 is actually perfect square and it would be written as 3 to the power of 2 and then x can continue to be written as minus x squared, x to the power of 2 because that's already in the format of uh, a square. So since I know that a is 3 and b is x, I can write my brackets as 3 plus x and then 3 minus x. Now remember, it doesn't matter if you do 3 plus x, 3 minus x or 3 minus x, 3 plus x. doesn't make a difference because once we multiply these out, we'll end up getting 9 minus x squared anyway. Okay, here's another one for you. Uh, you try this one. Pause the video here and have a go for yourself. 4x squared minus 25. When you've done it and you feel ready, press play and I'll go through it with you. Okay, so first we'll identify our a and b. I have 4x squared, which represents a squared, and then minus 25, which represents my minus b squared. So remember that 4x squared represents my a squared. What I want to do is I want to find out what the value of a is. So I can set this term up in a set of brackets raised to the power of 2. I want to find out what a is. I want to find out what goes inside here. And that's going to be 2x, because 2 squared is 4, x squared is x squared. This expands to give me this term here. So likewise, minus 25 represents my minus b squared, and I want to find out what this is raised to the power of 2, which is basically 5 squared. So 5 squared is 25, and 2x squared is 4x squared. So therefore, I know that I can write this down as a, which is 2x, and then minus b, which is 5, in two sets of brackets, 2x plus 5, and then 2x minus 5. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications because I'll be uploading some more videos about algebraic factorizing and expansion. So make sure you stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Oh no, I don't know why I squashed them together. Now I've got this uh, 